Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 456 of Progeny. Today, I'm doing Crimson, which has got an exclamation mark in there. Crimson by the Delta Salts. The Delta. I should do this again, but I'm not going to. No, no, because I'm a lazy bastard. Uh, the Delta Saxophone Quartet and Gwilym Simcock. Yeah. Got a nice touch of Gwilym Simcock there. Is there an ointment for it? No, but if you take these pills daily, it should clear up. Um, see, Crimson! So we actually got some King Crimson reviews because it's not this one isn't related to DGM, so I can I can do this. I can talk about this without Declan Colgan busting a nut. Hi Declan. Um now King Crimson's music has been covered in the jazz style before. Um, Ian Wallace did it with his Crimson Jazz Trio. Um, I wasn't a big fan of those. They were alright, but they were a little bit middle of the road. Um, they were a little bit, you know, lift music. A lot of people didn't like what me saying that. It happens. A lot of people don't like a lot of what I say. It happens. Let's just move on. You may disagree with me, but that's the way it is. I can't agree with everyone, and you can't agree with me. That's why it is. But anyway, this is Gwilym Simcock. Um, I saw him. Oh yes, indeed. I didn't see it, like, not in the street. I saw him with Bill Bruford and his Earthworks. Uh, back in the day when Mr. Bruford... Congratulations, Mr. Bruford, by the way, being Dr. Bruford. He's now Dr. Bruford. He's now a doctor of music. He has a PhD in the music. Um, I digress. But yeah, Gwilym Simcock worked with um, Bruford with Earthworks, but apparently wasn't familiar with any of King Crimson's work so it's funny this should, should come along uh, you've got six tracks on it they reimagine various King Crimson songs in, in the jazz style but with a saxophone quartet now they reminded me of London Saxophonic I had an album of theirs which was a cover of Michael Nyman uh, uh, tunes for um, Peter Greenaway films which was absolutely fantastic especially the stuff for uh, a draftsman's contract i really enjoyed it all on the saxophone very very intense uh, so yeah so the sound of that reminded me of of them this reminded me of them not the other way around that would be impossible because that means i'd have been projecting into the future and that couldn't have happened but so yeah you've got a nice bit of piano and saxophone there's no drums or anything there's a little bit of Percussion, I think, on two hands, but I think that's somebody hitting a piano lid or something. Um, but yeah, so it starts off with a kind of red. You see what I've done there? A kind of red. Yeah, just you get it. And I quite liked it because um, it was it was a cascade, a cascade of of toots and honks. <laughs> well, that's why you come here. Uh, <laughs> That'd be the the pull out quote on the poster: a cascade of toots and honks. Darren Locke, asshole. <laughs> um, so where was I? Yeah, um, it's I don't know. I don't know if I don't know if it's based on any of it. I don't know if it's based on red. I didn't kind of hear red in there. I'm sure. There, I'm sure. Was, excuse me. It's <coughs> <coughs> the central heat and it dries my throat out. But I need a glass of water. Um, but yeah, I think it's based on red, but it doesn't sound particularly like red. There's there's themes, you know, you know, you know when they do those themes and they extrapolate from a theme, you know, that clever stuff that proper musicians do. You know, it's like that, and I liked it. I thought it was good. Um, and then we go into Vroom, Coda, Marine, four, seven, five. Um, yeah, it was all right. It seems weird though not having the drums on it. That's the you know, but you know again they get you get a different a different feel for the music with it. Uh, again, what I, I applaud is the choice the choice of tracks because these are tracks that you wouldn't necessarily associate with jazz or saxophones. So you know these are like all, a lot these are all guitar you know tracks. So yeah, it wasn't it wasn't too bad. It weren't too bad. <laughs> The Night Watch. Now, the Night Watch, they really do play with, and they open it up, and it's it's you know it's it's very very different. Um, and but you hear the themes coming in and and going out. But I thought that was really really cool. I really like that one. 
Uh, dinosaur, eh, it was okay. I'm thinking I wasn't so keen on that one. Two Hands, again, they reinvented it. It's not a track that I like, but they, uh, when King Crimson do it, but it was, it was really subtle. I thought it was really subtle. And finally, The Great Deceiver. Again, that was that was that one was all over the place, but very interesting. The problem I have is covers, because covers, you see, covers are always a bit of a difficult. But they make it their own, right? They do make it their own, and and sometimes you'll be listening to it and think, is that is that really King? Is that really a King Crimson song? Because it is far removed from the original, you know. It's yeah. So so it's kind of interesting in that respect. But then you've got the whole jazz slant to it as well, which is you know, I don't know, a bit peculiar. And it's a, it's a bit of a bit. I, I hate to be. I hate to say it because people think I'm being dismissive, but I'm not. It's a bit bit of a novelty record, if you know what I mean. You know, it's one of these records that you might listen to a couple of times and go, oh, "That's nice," um, but I can't see you going back to. You might put it on for a friend and go, "Yeah, guess what they cut off." Have I I've done this before? I think I've done this in another review. I feel like I'm fucking repeating myself. I really do. Um, but you might put on the track and say, "Oh, what do you think of this?" You know, and and and. You know, in order to catch them out, um, it's forty-four minutes twenty-three, which means it doesn't outstay its welcome. That's good. It sounds lovely. It really is a lovely recording. They've really done a good job of it. There's a real sense of of space in the recording, and because it is saxophones and piano, um, you haven't got those um, kind of jazz ticks. You know, those which you get with but the which you got with the upright bass and the piano with. Um, Ian Wallace's version, you know, you kind of get that kind of jazz, kind of pseudo jazz kind of feel. Well, this is, feel, it just feels different because the, the the instrumentation, it's just got a different slant on it. Um, yeah, I think I think it's actually a cool, it's a cool record. It's a cool record. I don't think I'll play it a lot, but it is definitely worth checking out. It is, de yeah, I'm definitely going to say it's worth checking out, especially for. A kind of red and the night watcher. I thought those two tracks were were stand out for me, and and two hands as well. I thought they did a really, a really in interesting job with it. And again, it is interesting. It's music that is interesting, even if you're not a jazz fan. I think you go, oh, oh, that's a different way of that's a different way of interpreting it. You yeah. know. So yeah. So you got. So you go. And and it's sponsored by the Arts Council of for England. They're good. They've got an Arts Council grant, and they're not afraid to use it. Um, <laughs> and the National Lottery, National Lottery, hey, Sp sponsored it. How cool is that, eh? Uh, who said who said art's dead? Uh, so yeah, this was released today. So do do ch do check it out. I'm sure there are there are samples to be heard out there on the interwebs. In terms of rating, I'm going to give this. I'm going to give this a solid three kinds of red out of five. A solid three kinds of red out of five. That's it. I think that's a fair, a fair summation for what it is. That might, you know, it might that might pop. That might go to three and a half if if I if I really fall in love with it. Uh, but I listened to it twice and uh, oh god, I shouldn't have said that because you think that I haven't listened to it enough. You got to listen to it twenty thousand times before you do a review, you bastard. Um. But no, I think it's um, I think it's well worth checking out, and it's not too expensive either. I think it was a tenner. So I like cheap records, well, relatively cheap. It's when they start edging towards fifteen, you start getting a little bit. Oh no, fifteen. Oh. Uh, but yeah, tenner. So there you go. My name is Darren. Look, I've been talking about Crimson by Delta, Delta Saxophone Quartet and Gwilym Simcock. It's not it's not a venereal disease. He plays the he plays the old Joanna. He really does. He's really good at it. So there you go. I don't more thing to say. Are you ready? One, two, three. Prolong.